Hi everybody, so you're watching Nepalverse and this is me Robin. Today, I would like to talk about the condition of Nepali education system, especially relating to the Trivan University. As you guys all know, Trivan University is one of the oldest universities here in Nepal and the largest universities in terms of the enrollment of students and subjects offered, along with its prestigious history and appealing results and all. Well, Many of you may agree to disagree what I've already said right now here, but here I'm not going to talk about anything as such. I'm going to talk about actually some of the problems that people have lately been complaining about universities. I mean, Thriven University especially. Um, the major problem I believe that Thriven University has uh, is uh, the, the delay in terms of original publication. I mean, how many of you might have got the result? Well, uh, the good thing is that there has been lately some of the programs like International Relations and Diplomacy, Peace and Conflict and Labor and all, which are attracting a lot of students. And these, some of the programs, some of those really very special and selective programs have been able to publish the result in given time. But if we look at to the majority of the things, let me give you the level-wise uh, figure or level-wise condition, actually. If you talk about the bachelor's level of result, then uh, prior there was like a three years of bachelor's. So when there was a three years of bachelor's, student will get uh, the quickest of the time they would get their result published is that the completion of three years course was around four plus years. And as they said, we need to go international. They have updated the system of Thriven University from three years bachelor's to four years of bachelor's. And once the four years of bachelor's was started, again, the result publication that landed. So it just goes around from, it just started to go from like four years to five years and plus. And you know, there are some students who already are starting a third year, but still waiting for the result of like some past years. And also that's for the regular. And what about the partial examinees or who have failed and tried to attempt the examination for two, three times or more? Well, there's no guarantee. And when you try to ask the question to the authority regarding these things, um, it's like, I mean, you, you never get any satisfying result. That's one of the major problem. Another thing that I would like to talk about is, as you know that uh, if we talk about the case of Australia or even Canada or for America or for even for Japan and also Korea and there are some other countries, uh, there are so many number of students actually. The influx of student um, has been there and uh, I mean it has really been increased. So if you go to every consultancies or every, I mean the number of consultancies, consultancies that has been or that have been opened here in this area also speaks a volume about uh, the influx of students trying to go for foreign studies. Why they are not really interested to study in our own university which is way cheaper and which is our well, if we look at the scenario and if we try to know about the nerves of the people and their, uh, uh, I would say the mandate or the validations or their opinion about it, then the majority of the thing, majority of them would complain the major thing that is the course. They say that the course would be like, it's really outdated, you know, uh, the father, the son and even the grandchildren are starting the same course. Well, they say so. I don't know how much true is it. But um, in my opinion, that's also very true, especially the world has been very, very competent. So there has to be some sort of updated knowledge with, you know, uh, equipped with information and technology. But I think Thriven University has been failed to do so. That is another problem. And if we talk about, um, I'm not going to talk about the infrastructures and the area because, which is still quite acceptable. But the major problem is that Thriven University is really far behind in terms of providing the practical education. So in terms of practicality also, as I've already talked about in my last video as well, if if you look at, look at the, the person's academic qualification, then the academic qualification of that person is around like bachelor's, parts of master's, pass or even someone's doing PhD or even for plus two right but even though they have already you know completed a certain level of education or they have earned a certain level of degree they fail to fill up even a certain form and there are a lot of things that you know that a lot of contributing factors that talk about it so why they are doing that why is it happening is because I think we die, there has been a dire need of practical education. We are simply taught the course and we just got the degree. That also, of course, two, three years later.
never mind. But again, we haven't thought to do that practically. So that is the thing. And another major problem that I've seen is, oh my God, the politics. Politics has completely destroyed the system. I mean, we know that there's a university grant commission uh, and also, you know, there there is this, um, what we call, Shichak Shiva or what we call, right? Teachers, um, uh, commissions there. But, I mean, there has been a lot of times that we get to result, we get to see the result where uh, the candidates haven't been selected fairly. They got uh, the, the, you know, appointment or they get to work in there. I'm not saying all, but that has become lately in the news. Well, there are really very nice teachers as well. And I don't complain on that. They're really very nice. They're really very knowledgeable. They're really very capable, I would say, with um, impeccable um, understandings and knowledge and expertise into their respective field. But if we look at the recent trends, like, you know, uh, lately, uh, there were rumors and also the lot of news outlets has proven these rumors as a reality that the appointment of teachers into that IOG or what we call the commission has lately heavily influenced by the political affiliation. And not just that, you know, there's a union, students union, and those students union also aren't really doing the way they should be performing. I mean, they are there just for the namesake. How many times they might have actually spoken for the problem of students? Well, I remember not, at least. Please correct me if I'm wrong. And also, there were like not so many times that, uh, you know, a lot of lot of changes has been made or changes have been made for that matter. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of things is still in there to work about. And also, we keep on complaining about or we keep on getting to see or hear or read or come to know about the news that a lot of Nepali students are leaving the country for the foreign um, studies or, let's say, employment, at least for the paper ticket studies. Um, there is, uh, like, I would say, um, you know, they are leaving. But have we really tried to dig in why they are leaving? You know, no matter whatever name they say for the course, well, I'm not saying all are leaving for the purpose of money, but the majority is for the economic pur purpose, of course. Because in order to, why are you studying? Or why do we study? I mean, uh, to get a better job. Why do we want to get a better job? To earn money. And why would like to earn money? To live our life better, right? So at the end of the day, it's, it's a whole cycle. It's a vicious cycle. So if you're not really... Uh, you know, we're simply imparting the education and try to, uh, you know, let's say, teach our students or educate our student theoretically only, but not giving them the opportunity or at least not creating the the environment for the uh, circulations or kind of like uh, personality development, career growth and prospectus as per the as per their university course. I don't think this this loop's ever gonna end, and I don't think we are. I mean, like gonna stop this. I mean, this trend is gonna stop ever soon, also. And uh, and what another problem that I've seen is that uh, we really lack the right person at a right place in terms of education in in our industry. Also, if, if these trends keep, keep on going, I believe this country would be left um, only with the politicians and the bureaucrats, <laughs> not with the youths and the other people out there. So that has really need to be addressed. That problem has to be addressed, actually. And I also believe that um, we seriously lack the entrepreneur thing, right? I mean, how many of us have literally seen or, you know, come to know about the entrepreneur produced from TU? Well, obviously, most of the people, wherever they are in the country right now, obviously, they, uh, they relate their alma mater to TU is because, is because there were no university uh, at such TU prior. But now, um, if these trends keeps on going on, like we believe after 10 to 15 years, you'd hardly find any expertise or manpower graduating from TU. Because um, that is because most of us are applying for foreign studies. And also there's a tendency, you know, the, the, the biggest problem that I've seen here in our TU is that uh, we always validate international education. I mean, like even, well, I personally have had experience that um, you are studying in same level and the, somebody does the same degree, same course from same level of thing from international university. Then they are considered as, you know, the the the... the 
I mean, the, the most, they're revered so much and you're considered like really nobody. So I think we are also trying to, you know, not so much uh, give importance to our own graduates because let's 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 face the reality if someone says that you i have done my masters in business administration from london university or maybe i don't know from uk or some other country from australia if there is something like that and if someone says that i have done my masters in business administration from tu then who do you think people would gonna hire they would say, oh you've done your masters from this country that country Seriously, why are you not giving much importance to your own graduates, your own manpower? Is it because you are not? I mean, that's because you really don't take highly so much to our university. You're not giving priority to our TU, to um, to our own university. So if you are not giving priority to your own manpower and try to exaggerate or give importance to the other, then how are we going to overcome this sort of situation? Have we literally, have we seen the ranking of TU? I mean, how many of, how many people would know TU internationally? And also, as one of my friends was uh, saying some other day when we were having a discussion, we get to see in Nepal people getting affiliation, you know, uh, you know, there are colleges in Nepal, too many, getting affiliated from this country, London, UK, in Australia, or some city or some, some like that. But how many universities or colleges are there in the world that are actually how many colleges actually are there in the world which have taken the affiliation from tu i guess it's none how many international we are and we all know the world is very much globalized the market is very competitive then are we really creating the capable uh you know global competitive manpower I think that's the question need to be asked. And we, do, we need, we really need to, this is a high time. This is a high time that we need to stop giving priority to international university graduates. And uh, that too on the cost of, you know, devaluating our own graduates. And if obviously we believe they have done better, they have much um, capabilities, then why don't we make our own manpower, uh, our own production, our own graduates capable? I think this sort of need, this sort of questions need to be addressed. What do you think, guys? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? You're free to comment on. Please do let me know about your thought process, about your comment on. And if you like the video, please give a thumbs up and support us. If not, then at least give us constructive suggestion. I definitely will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.